Right. So yesterday we were talking about surface areas of rectangular prisms. Any questions about that? Super easy. It's just adding together six rectangles. That's all it is. All right. So today we're going to talk about other prisms. Surface area of other prisms. Examples. Um, for example, if we have a triangle like this, triangular prism, and let's say this was um, five inches, five inches, six inches, and and we're trying to calculate its surface area. So the first thing to understand is sometimes they might ask you to just find the lateral surface area. Okay, so the lateral surface area or sometimes it's just called the lateral area this is just the area, the total combined area of the lateral faces, which are like the sidewalls here. So lateral surface area is the total combined area of the lateral faces. Which remember, you're talking about a prism like this, the faces are the two parallel sides that are congruent to each other, which would be the triangular ends in this case. And the lateral surfaces would be like the, the rectangles that are on the bottom, on the left, and the right. Okay, so remember a prism might not necessarily be sitting on its face. That's the case here, right? It's sitting on one of its lateral faces. So in this case, the lateral area, the lateral area would be just three rectangles added together, right? This would be like this rectangle right here, which has area five times eight, plus the one that you can't see, which has area five times eight, plus the bottom of this prism, which has area six times eight. Right? So this would be 40 plus 40 plus 48, 128 square inches. And then if we wanted to find the entire surface area, we would just add together the two triangles and the lateral area, right? So the total surface area would be two times one of these triangles plus the lateral area, right? In general, it's going to be two times the base, because there's, there's two bases, and then plus the lateral area, right? That's the general formula. So in this problem, we'd have to sort of take the triangle out of context. So this is five. This is five and this is six. How can we find the area of that triangle? That's one way. Absolutely. Heron's formula would work, right? Um, there's actually a little bit better way in this case. You can always do Heron's formula if you know three out of three of the sides of the triangle, right? But in this case, since it's isosceles, we can actually just draw the altitude in. And we know this is three and three. So what does that height have to be then? Three. No, 
That would be if it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. This isn't. It's not 45 either. What? I'm looking at this triangle right here. This is three and that's five. What does this have to be? Four. Four. This is a three, four, five right triangle. It's not 30, 60, 90. It's not 45, 45, 90. But you could do the Pythagorean theorem and get that this is four. Does that make sense? Okay, so the area of the triangle then would just be one half base times height. It would be one half six times four. So that's a little bit easier than doing here as formula. So we have two times one half six times four plus 128. That's the total surface area. Well, if you take two times half of something, the two and the one half just cancel. So this ends up being 24 plus 128. Is 152 square inches. So that's the total surface area. So sometimes they might ask for the just the lateral area. Sometimes they might ask for the total surface area. The lateral area just doesn't include the bases. That's the deal. Okay, let's try another one. What if we have a hexagonal prism? A regular hexagonal prism. Okay, so let's try and draw it. Um, Hexagonal prism. And let's say this side is six centimeters. And let's say this is ten centimeters. That's all the measurements they gave us. Okay, so the surface area here, if you break it down, it's really just going to be six times one of the rectangular sidewalls plus two times the hexagonal bases. Does that make sense? There's six surfaces that are identical rectangles, and there's two faces that are identical hexagons. So the rectangles are easy. This is just six times six times ten, right? Each each rectangle is six by ten. The hexagons are a little bit more work, so let's take it out of context again. We have this regular hexagon. Like this. this is six. They're all six, right? So remember the process for finding its area is we draw one of these triangles that are formed by two consecutive radii and a side like that, right? The area of this hexagon is going to be six times that red triangle, right? So remember that process is, and since it's a hexagon, that's nice and convenient because that means this is six and this is six as well. So if we're trying to find the height, remember this is three and this is three. This is the one where a special triangle. What's its height then? Yeah, this one's three radical three. So if I go back up here, I have two times the area of one of those red triangles, which is one half base times height times six. Everybody clear with that? The area of one of this hexagon is the area of that red triangle. That's what this part is, the area of the triangle, times six. And then there's two hexagons total. That's why the two is out front. So what do I have here? I have six times six, that's 36 times 10 is 360. Then I have 
2 times a half they cancel. 6 times 3 is 18. 18 times 6, I don't know if that is what 18 times 6 is 108. So this is plus 108 radical 3. That's simplest radical form. We can't combine these at all because one of them has a radical and one of them doesn't. They're not like terms. We can't combine them. If we wanted to, we could find a decimal answer or whatever, but let's just leave it like this. This is the exact answer. Square centimeters. Okay. Let's do two more examples. What if we have a another triangular prism? This time, let's say it looks like this. So it's a right triangular prism. The top triangle is a right triangle. This is a right triangular prism. Let's say this is um, four inches and four inches. And this is Okay, so the total surface area is two times that triangular base, which I'm just going to draw it like this actually, right triangle, plus. Um, there's three rectangles, but they're they're different, right? So I'm just going to say plus the lateral area over simplify it and say it's three times something because they're all different. I mean, two of them are the same, but yeah, okay. So this ends up being two times one half base times height, four times four, right? I can think of this as being like the base, and this is like the height, right? Plus, now like I said, the lateral area is three rectangles, right? There's one of them is four times eight, another one is four times eight, but then there's a third one. How can I get its dimensions? Its height is eight. I'll do that part. That's the hard part. How do you get its width? Yeah, so how can you find the other side of the triangle? Yeah, we could use the Pythagorean theorem, or in this case, we can actually use special triangles as well. But yeah, okay. what's that? No, you're right. I mean, the Pythagorean theorem absolutely works. If this is four and this is four, you could say four squared plus four squared equals x squared. This is 16 plus 16, which is 32. So x is the square root of 32, which simplifies to be 16 times 2. So this is or radical two. Now, the reason why this is a special triangle is this is actually a 45, 45, 90 triangle, right? It's isosceles, so the base angles are equal. This is 45, this is also 45. And the shortcut for a 45, 45, 90 triangle is if you know the length of the leg, you just multiply it by radical two. We would have gotten the answer much quicker just by realizing this is a special triangle. But the Pythagorean theorem absolutely isn't wrong. It's, it's correct works okay so this third triangle then has a width of four radical two and a height of eight so that's the third triangle right so these three together these are like the lateral area the three rectangles added together so this ends up being 16 because the two and the one half cancel plus 32, plus 32, plus 32 radical 2. So 16 plus 32 plus 32, that's 64 plus 16 is 80, plus 32 radical 2. That's the exact answer. 
square inches. And if we wanted to, it would be easy to get a decimal error, right? We could just do the calculator. 80 plus 32 radical 2. Get an answer. So it would be 125.25. About 125.25 square inches. Right, let's see one more example. What if we have a trapezoidal prism? Remember the, the word in front of prism tells you the shape of the base, right? So up here we had a right triangular prism because the base had the shape of a right triangle. We have a trapezoidal prism, that means that the base has the shape of a trapezoid. So what if it just is sitting on its side like this? The gold bar. Is there a reason gold bars are made of that shape? This has something to do with trapezoid, or they just shoot that shape? I have no idea. <laughs> I, that's a good question. I'm going to look that up as soon as I'm done here. Uh, so, suppose we have this trapezoidal prism. Let's say this was um, just making up numbers here. Suppose this was like six centimeters. Five centimeters, seven centimeters, eight centimeters, and nine centimeters. And the perpendicular height is four. So let's just go through it in a methodical way. The surface area is going to be. Two times that trapezoidal base, which is really the end in this case. Well, the trapezoid area formula is one half height times B1 plus B2, six plus eight. So that's the two ends of it, the bases. Any questions so far? Plus, and there's going to be four rectangles, right? So let's do it methodically so that you don't miss any. The top one is six times nine. Then let's just go around the whole thing. This side is going to be seven times nine. The bottom is going to be eight times nine. And then the, the left side, which you can't see, is five times nine. So let's simplify it. This is 4 times 14, right? Because the 2 and the 1 half just cancel. So 4 times 14, 4 times 14 is 56 plus 54 plus 63 plus 72 plus 45. Fifty six plus fifty four plus sixty three plus seventy two plus forty five. So we have the two trapezoids and then four rectangles. Two ninety. The most common mistake that people make in these problems is they just miss something. If they won't be doing it in an organized way and they'll miss one of the rectangular sides. Or they won't remember to multiply the base times two because there's two surfaces. Make sure that your that your total number of surfaces that you're adding up is equal to the total number of faces on the on the prism. Okay, it has to be that way. Okay, any questions about this stuff? Okay, that's all I got. So the homework is on delta math again. It's just called surface area of prisms.